Hi ladies, Shannon here. I was really excited when Kathy announced that the theme for a new 2020 was going to be still. Little did we know that it was not just going to be the theme for the conference, but pretty much the whole year. As many of you know, we're running a COVID safe conference at Mapleton in just a few short weeks. I'm really sorry, but I can't actually be there. But I just wanted to share a few thoughts with you around the concept of being still. Two years ago, I was crossing the street and I literally tripped over a curb, fell and broke a little bone in the side of my foot. Now this was a little bone that I didn't even know existed until I found out that I actually couldn't walk without it. Not only couldn't I walk, but I also couldn't really stand for a period of about six weeks. So for that time, Simple tasks like doing the dishes or preparing dinner, hanging out washing or even having a shower just became a real production. So I found that I was spending a lot of time sitting down with my foot up and getting through the day achieving nothing much. I was getting more frustrated and more antsy as each day went along. About two weeks into my forced rest period, we had a day of prayer for the organisation that I work for. To be honest, I almost didn't go because I was in quite a bit of pain and feeling a little bit sorry for myself, but my husband encouraged me to go. One of the engineers got up and told a story about a bird that he'd seen that morning. Now that got my attention right away because the engineers that I know aren't usually ones for bird watching. He'd said that as he sat down at the breakfast table, a little sparrow came and flew into the glass and it kind of just slammed into the door and fell to the ground and literally laid there for a full two minutes. Just when he thought he was going to have to pick the poor little thing up and bury it, it got up, gave itself a little shake and flew off. He drew the analogy that sometimes it's not until we're slammed into a window that we literally stop and give ourselves permission to rest, to be still. After he finished telling that story, I had tears on my cheek because I felt God whisper into my spirit, you will soon be up, flying around again. But for now, come, rest, be still, and know that I am God. I think that sometimes we've heard that verse from Psalm 46.10 so frequently that we lose the magnitude of what it actually means. Be still and know that I am God. The Hebrew verb be still used in this verse is rapha, which means to let go or cease striving. It means to surrender everything that's in your hands into the hands of our Father. It means to let go of the need to control everything. It means to relax your hold and rely on God to hold you. I don't know about you, but that's something that I can tend to struggle with. I think I pride myself on the number of things that I can get done each day. Sometimes I think as Christians, we not only subscribe to our society's addiction to busyness, But we can even tend to add in the Protestant work ethic, which somehow equates hard work with godliness. Being still does not seem to be a practice that many of us are very good at. Tony Horsfall, in his book, Working from a Place of Rest, has this to say. To sit still and relax, we must be able to trust God with our workload. It requires faith to stop in the midst of a heavy schedule, but we must be willing to do so if we are to wait upon God and draw our strength from him. We must, like Jesus, practice the discipline of stopping. We must shed the feeling that we always have to be on the go, making the most of our time and doing as much as possible. We need to give ourselves permission to slow down and breathe more deeply. Being still isn't about letting go and having a Netflix binge or a couch day. We must also take into consideration the second part of the verse, to know that he is God. 
the Hebrew word that the psalmist uses here for no is actually the same word that's used in the Bible in other places to describe an intimate relationship. For us to truly let go and surrender to God, we must know him intimately. We must be seeking him with our whole heart through prayer and through reading his word on a regular basis. The invitation to stop striving, to surrender to God, is one that is open to each and every one of us today. Can I just encourage you to not wait until you're slammed into a window or break something, whether it be a bone, your mental health or a relationship? Relinquish your to-do list to God and trust him enough to stop and be still. Accept the invitation or rather the instruction from the psalmist to be still and know that he is God.